What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Pez Universe podcast. I think this is our 19th episode of the podcast, and we've got a bumper episode in store for you tonight, hopefully. A lot to discuss with a lot going on in the world of Pez. Of of course, I am joined by the main man, my favorite brummy from across the pond, none other than Weza. What is the crack with you, man? I've been upgraded from my yeah. guests, ladies and gentlemen. He's finally got it right. Uh, I'm all good, man. I'm all good. <laughs> that was we're, one we're, uh... slip up last last <laughs> week or two weeks ago or whatever. And I'm not going to be uh, forgetting about it anytime soon if it's up to you. <laughs> no, it's 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 very good, man. We we're we're in we're in a good place at the moment. Um, yeah. I think obviously we've got a, we've got a lot to talk about, which yeah, is obviously very it's very handy for a podcast when you've got a lot of things to talk about. So, but I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get into that. And a lot of questions in this week as well by f- Facebook, Twitter, like everything, emails even, old school, old school emails. Old school emails. A lot of people have been DMing me, the Pez Universe Twitter account, and I know we put up a couple of tweets today and people were kind of like replying back to it in the thread. So we'll try and kind of mix and match a couple of different things in throughout the, the podcast. Um, and as usual, no script. Um, it's basically just going to be me and Wes chilling out and discussing all things Pez. So we are going to start with the the data pack, though, Wes, and mm-hmm. uh, which dropped today. So at time of recording, it is the fifth of December. Um, and just as I said, it is our nineteenth episode. So for our twentieth episode in the next time that you're listening to us, we are going to be having like a Christmas special. So we will have more details on that. Check out our Twitter, but. We're going to be doing something special for it to to mark our twentieth episode. Can you imagine it's our twentieth episode, nearly? I know it almost feels like a marriage at this yeah, point. It's, it's quite, like it's our quite first crazy. Year anniversary, really. Six month anniversary, nearly. <laughs> nearly. Don't, We're a couple don't tell of weeks our shy. Don't tell our partners, folks. No, don't. <laughs> but um, yeah, we are going to kick off with the data back because that's what people have been talking about. Now, obviously, we get the we get the usual. Um, you know general gameplay tweaks or you know to improve your experience and all this but we might just touch on the the content or some would say the lack of content for the dlc uh tree but what are, what are your thoughts on the dlc and in the data pack Wes? well in terms of the data pack i mean there's 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 quite a few kind of um kind of question well i wouldn't even say question marks but bullet points really yeah um i think the first one obviously we point to of course you know we you know we prim- we primarily talk around my club because it's it's you know it's it's kind of the flagship mode these days obviously it wasn't in the past but it is certainly is now obviously you've got the the, the kind of the raft of partnered squads that have come out um mm. which obviously are, are paid dlc um you've got um the colombian license league license yeah, was it Colombian league? seems yeah, the to Colombian have... league is just default now so it's it's unlicensed yeah it which... came out with the blue really yeah i mean it, it was kind of very low fanfare and and didn't really <laughs> i don't think anybody was expecting it um uh you know obviously you've, you've got your typical kind of uh, face upgrades and 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 you know your your boot packs and whatever um obviously I, I, i'm quite a fan because obviously tyro mings has now got a face <laughs> um but yeah i mean you know, there's, there's, there's always uh, in my eyes. There's always more that can be done. Mm. You know, there there is there is always more that can be done. I, you know, I think I think it's the wording. I think that people get a little bit stuck with is that when I think people traditionally see data pack, they think that's a patch. Yeah. Or they think that's a that's a gameplay patch. Yeah. When it it's, it <laughs> it kind of flirts with it a little bit because mm. it's like. You, you know you can you it, you could argue it's a patch but at the same time you could argue actually it's it's not and i think i think that's where people get caught in the long grass a little bit with it i mean i i've just come off a stream with it myself and it's it, it's it seems to be playing quite fluid but yeah. it it always tends to in the kind of the early days um uh, of when a when a when a new data pack does come out and you know i'm sure in the next coming you know, couple of weeks, we might see a, a vastly different experience, or yeah. we might see the same experience, and it holds it holds its ground. We we just don't know uh, mm. what what the kind of effects of it are going to be. But I think, you know, overall, uh, I think I'm I'm happy to see more stuff go in, but I'm not exactly psyched to see stuff disappear, yeah. uh, especially with that with that league. But I think if people, I think what happens is a lot of the time is people build up like the day you know the dlcs or the data packs or whatever it is that they come out and say is going to be released on a specific date and they're like oh this is going to get me back playing pez you know this is going to get me back like you know where i was with the demo in terms of my enjoyment with it and it's like you know that's not really i i i'm of the opinion that 
I don't think the core gameplay, and I always go back to this, and people are always giving out to me for saying it in the DMs, They're like, you always to say the core gameplay is this and that, and it's broken and all this. I think the core gameplay of PES 2020 is quite decent. I think it's quite good. Um, we'll get into kind of, we were kind of discussing before the podcast amongst ourselves, just what we thought maybe had changed slightly, like ever so slightly with the physicality and stuff after this update. Um, but I think the core gameplay is kind of been pretty, you know, it's been pretty the same, like for since launch. So if somebody didn't like the game in the first week of launch, I don't think a data pack is going to like pull them back in, you know, at Christmas yeah. time. Um, but I think people that aren't playing PES as much as they used to before are probably hoping that it will, do you know, that kind of way. So they're like, oh, I really yeah. want this to pull me back in. And it's like, well you know you're pretty much never going to get pulled back in if you don't want to enjoy the core gameplay because one of the biggest problems pez has had over the last couple of years is like the speed of the game and like mm-hmm. the speed of the game has pretty much stayed the same from like e3 all the way to like to now do you know what i mean it hasn't changed yeah. um so now i think people are just kind of saying it's not for me i don't enjoy it and then on the other side of things some people are absolutely loving it and like both sides are perplexed at the other side as to why they don't yeah. why they do like it so um yeah it is it is a difficult one like just just going on from what you were saying is like with the with the with the dribbling and stuff i felt after there was this kind of like real small update that went live as well so the version of the game now is like gone from 105 to 106 with this data pack so there was a small mm-hmm. little update for it um and like Again, we get the usual, you know, generic or whatever it is, uh, like small in like t- what's the word? I'm yeah, uh, gener- yeah, it's like uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just tongue tied uh, there for a minute. We bought it. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, it's like a gameplay enhancements to yeah. improve overall gaming experience. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Words so like, to that effect. Yeah, so it's like they have obviously changed some things, but they haven't actually come out and like broken it down and said this is done or you know a A is now b or this is changed or this is nerfed or this is boosted or whatever um i think it's playing good Uh, you know i think the dribbling the finesse dribbling and stuff has been a little bit more zippy i don't know if it's placebo um and we're not gonna we're not gonna like spend too much time on this because by the time this goes live we could be made look stupid but it could be vastly different just general opinions from playing you know i played match day today um and it was one of the first times I've actually been off to actually play match day during the day. I know they've extended the times, which I think is pretty good, pretty good as well. Um, mm-hmm. We spoke about that before, but like it felt zippier, and the defending and stuff still pretty much felt the same. Um, responses still felt the same. I thought the ref still felt the same, unfortunately, with the collisions and stuff. But in terms of the the dribbling, and I think the physicality was was slightly improved. Um, so again i mean it's it's coming into what i like to call online pez's golden kind of period where it's like january to march is when i usually really start enjoying pez for the last like four or five years that's been my golden period where i'm like i actually love this game online um but it is it is as you said it's it's hard because by the time this goes live it could be like oh like what are they actually talking about like i was playing it last yeah. night there's no change to physicality i've played 50 games since this podcast was recorded yeah and you know? i've had no fouls given to me and yeah. everything's wrong and i don't understand why and and yeah i mean sure you know and 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 you know i take the point that you know the gaming experience should be the same for everybody but yeah. as we know from from previous kind of um from previous kind of uh, kind of iterations of the game, is that it's not always the case. Yeah. You know, the gaming experience does vary, and and I know that that's like it is not really something that people like to hear. But no. it, that's that's kind of what happens is that the game does play differently for different people, and it's mm. it's a shame that is the way that it is. You know, I, I would love it to not be that way, but yeah. unfortunately, that's that's where we're at um as a as a as a as a kind of community i think that's exactly where we're at at the moment is that it will play differently and we just kind of almost in a nicest possible way we kind of have to kind of get on with it Mm. because it's not going to fundamentally change anytime soon so we just have to kind of just kind of get on with it i suppose yeah but like we were it's interesting that you say that because that is something that i really actually agree with like that type of thinking because 
it's like what we were talking about in the group chat in the Pez Universe group chat there in the WhatsApp and we kind of touched on a couple of different games and where we were with our levels of enjoyment with them and like you know how much I love the NBA uh, 2K series like mm-hmm. I've been a massive fan since like for the last couple of years I've been a huge fan and I've just felt over the last like maybe two to three weeks when I was actually playing NBA 2020 I just wasn't enjoying myself. I was just sitting there and, you know, it was just there like, ugh, like this is actually kind of a chore to play. And I was like, why am I sitting down on my free time trying to unwind, playing a game that I'm getting no, you know, enjoyment out of? Yeah, no enjoyment out of, um, yeah. And it was one of the first, like it's literally been the first NBA 2K game that I've actually felt like that. So it's just not for me. And instead of me sitting there and trying to force enjoyment out of it, that is kind of me looking for a game, you know, to handle differently than the last game i'm just going to say well like look like i'm not enjoying this like let's put it on the shelf for a little bit and play something else that i am enjoying and then it doesn't need to be a big you know six page tweet rant um or something like that for me to make up that decision it's just basically you know it's like what i said if pez if pez wasn't for you the first week of release like then you know there's there's a high possibility that's not going to be <laughs> for you now no matter what they bring out no matter how many faces they they add um yeah you know is that just you know i spoke to a guy today and he talked about he made a good point in the dm he was like you know i'm talking about people and their kind of instant gratification where it's like you yeah know, the game yeah, is playing 100%. the game is playing flawless and it's a brilliant game and it's one of the best pez games ever when you're winning games but when you start yep. losing it's kind of oh, this is why I lost, and, you know, and... Yeah. It's, yeah, I think, it is I think hard we, to distinguish between kind of, like, you know, what's just a loss and what's actually, like, a game issue. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah, yeah. I think I think for me, I think it, you'd, you'd look at it um, kind of from a... from a from a kind of an outsider's perspective, and, and you are kind of looking around going, well, hold on a minute, I, I'm normally pretty good at this game, so why is this not working? And yeah. sometimes it is just the case that it's, it's just not working for you on that day. Mm. You know, and it is sometimes as simple as that. You know, we, we like we've said before, we, you know, we live in a world where, you know, it is instant gratification and everything is, you know, it should be readily accessible to everybody and, and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying something, uh, as we've we've said, God knows how many times on this podcast, mm. if you're not enjoying it, put it down. Yeah. Like just go, uh, like go do something else. And that's not me going, oh, just get good. That's that's just me just yeah. going. Do you know what? Just go and enjoy what you're doing. Go go do something that is different to what you're doing now. Because at yeah. the moment, you're not. You're, it's quite apparent that you're not enjoying it. Mm. You know, and don't don't go, force I yourself into further, a hole. I even go further than that and say that like when you i i totally agree with you like and like sorry for cutting in but it's like people aren't you know when you say there it's not it's not you saying go get good at the game or whatever like at the same time you know i don't think you or me or anybody that kind of like is able to to think about game development think about games and kind of what role they play in in like enjoyment and our entertain in entertaining us and stuff like yeah you know none of us play professionally none of us like you know what i mean like we all have jobs we all have lives outside of of gaming but it's like that's not to say that the game doesn't have issues where it's just like oh you don't like the game so like either you know get good or else like just fuck off and don't play it like because yeah. there is fundamental things that need to be in a football game like to make it actually passable let alone enjoyable um, Yeah. but like where do you draw the line on like, where do you draw the line on saying, okay, this game is actually, you know, technically good, like with NBA 2K. NBA 2K is technically a beautiful game. Like, it looks great, it handles great, there's a good skill gap there. But, like, where do you kind of, like, draw from that then, the enjoyment level? So it's like, I don't know why I didn't like this game or why I'm not enjoying it. We I always bring up Red Dead Redemption. Like, flawless yeah. game, absolutely brilliant, mission design, everything brilliant. And it was like... I kind of had more fun playing something like Assassin's Creed. And yeah. does that say more about me? Does it say more about the game? It's like a big wider topic, but I know what you mean, like what you were saying there about like gratification as well, because people do find it hard to kind of let go, don't they? They kind of find it hard to step back. The thing is, the thing is with, with, with anything. Um, and I, and I've, I think I even mentioned this on the, on the, the, the stream tonight you get to a stage where you think oh do you know what actually i'm gonna stop playing this yeah and something 
something just ticks over in your head and all of a sudden you go actually <laughs> i really want to play this game now and, and it, it, it is the most i can only say it's the most fascinating thing because i i was all kind of pretty much dead in the water for playing pez yeah and i was like i just sat there today going do you know what? Actually, let's give this let's give this data pack a go. Let's give this a go. Let's let's see what this is all about. And it was complete. Like to me, I was just like, where did this even come from? Yeah. Now I I didn't win every game on my stream, but I wasn't I wasn't annoyed. Yeah. Like uh, I mean, granted, some people might point to that and go, "What well, does that mean? You don't like the game?" It's like, well, well, no, that doesn't mean I don't like the game. It just simply means that I wasn't that fussed if I won or lost. Now whether mm. that's a whether that's a uh, a new thing that I, I'm trying to... Maybe that's something that's clicking over in my head that I'm becoming a little bit more mature about my yeah. games. I'm not sure. Or whether it's a case that my kind of killer instinct for playing games is is is, is on its way out. Mm. But for me, it's just like, oh, what am I enjoying more? And it's just like, oh, what am I playing? Like, you know, I had, I had people... God God love them. I appreciated them for coming to the chat. But some people were like, oh, do you know what? I thought you'd I thought you'd left Pez. Mm. I was like, I record a weekly, or at least I record a, a podcast where we, we, we openly discuss Pez. If it was the case that I'd left it, I wouldn't be doing anything to do with the game. And more mm. importantly, I wouldn't be streaming it either. Yeah. If, I don't, if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Like, it's just, unfortunately, <laughs> that's that's the way I am as a person. I'm either all in or I'm all out, yeah. you know? Um, that's the thing, man, is that, like, I think people sometimes forget that it's, like, and I, it actually really kind of, like, uh, I don't like to think too hard about it because it's, like, one of these things. It's, like, it's like racism or something. Like, it's just, like, it, it, it really bothers me when I think too hard about something that's, like, to, like, most people or, to, well, to me, like, anyone, really, like, it should be fairly kind of you know like the thing to do like you know none of us fucking like you know what i mean none of us like try act in a certain way like we all try to be nice people we all try to yeah do you know what i'm saying like it's just kind of common sense basically of you're not gonna like go up and like kick a fucking dog or do something like that you know what i mean and obviously there are people that do things like that but it's like sometimes i think people forget that it's a like it's a video game and that if you're yeah. like you can literally just turn it off and play something else it's like yeah. and i can understand why people that aren't enjoying it continuously feel the need to like force people that are enjoying it in like to kind of nearly like mock them for enjoying it and like oh you don't know a good game like you're just a sheep you don't know a good game if it hits you like you know back when i played pez when it was like iss 98 like there was none of this like you know what i mean scripting and all this type of stuff and it's like well like that's fair enough but like i'm enjoying i'm enjoying playing it like yeah so what's the no, issue like you know yeah what I, mean? I mean i was sat in a um i was i was stood in or well, i was stood i said i sent you a video of it and tweeted about it at the yeah, time the i was in i was in a mad retro store and i was just like i'm coming over by the way yeah good good but it was like i'm looking at the store and i'm like this is insane. Like mm. this is this is mental. Like this is stepping into your childhood, and it is like. But then you look at it and you go, okay, well, was was Mario Kart sixty four really that good, <laughs> or was Goldeneye really that good? Mm. And it was like you, you kind of start to go, oh, actually, I don't. It was gaming as good as it was when it was back then, mm. or or is it a case that as the point I've made before in this this kind of podcast is that. You know, people like to feed into the, the their nostalgia. Yeah. You know, we, of course we can all, we can all rattle off our greatest ever memories. We can all rattle off. Uh, you know, I, I did it on a stream the other night with my two IRL pals. You know, we were rattling off our greatest our greatest remembrances of, of football moments, which mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll get onto that later. Okay, but it was like real football it, chat. You know, it was it was a case of like it. it there were these moments that you can kind of recollect, and there's goals you can remember, and all these kind of other stuff. But but in truth, was it as good as it was back then? Yeah. And, and you know, you do look at it and go, ah, oh, well, yeah. Zidane was Zidane was really good, you know. But but and then you get you know people going, oh, do you know what? KDB is like one of the greatest number tens. It's like yeah, yeah, but was he was he as good as Zidane? It's like no, he wasn't. But you'll still get some people that will argue that yeah. kind of point. And it's like, well, actually. No, nobody is incorrect, and this kind of goes to my point or my next kind of point is that opinions are fine. Yeah. Opinions are okay. Like you can have something that's different to somebody else. I've mm. I, I tweet I tweeted out about it about how it, it feels as though at the moment with any game, 
not just football games, but just gaming in general, whether it be GTA, whether it be Red Dead, whether it be uh, The Last of Us or whatever, or whatever game it is, or COD, or whatever game it is, it's that whichever pack of people gets there first yeah. are the people that win the argument. Yeah, you're right. Because it's like, it's almost like a, like a, like you can't, you, you, you can't disagree, you can't just respectfully disagree with anybody mm. anymore. It's like the Messi versus Ronaldo debate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Am I going to fall out with you, somebody who I respect, who I talk to almost daily, <laughs> if yeah. I think Ronaldo is the, is the best of all time and you think Messi is? Like, yeah. why does it have to be that if you think FIFA is the better game this year and I think Pez is, like, why does it have to be that me and you can't discuss it and just, like, leave that part of the, like, discussion agree to disagree? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I respect you, Wes. That's grand. I'm glad you're enjoying FIFA or I'm glad you're enjoying Red Dead and I didn't or you're enjoying NBA 2K. Um, yeah. It does, man. Well, I know. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent now. No, 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 it's fine. It does, like, things like that actually, like, bother me. They're like... I can't understand. It's like, just plug out the con, just play something else. Like, it's just, yeah. it really kind of well, gets to me. Well, I don't for, know why. For, for, for me, I mean, it was the, the comment I made, the comment I made today and the, and the further, the further comment that I made in the, uh, in the, in the group chat for, for Best Universe, which was, do you know what? Like, uh, you know, Wes is enjoying, you know, and I'll, and I'll simplify it here. Like, Wes is enjoying FIFA. Mm. Barry is enjoying Pez. Which statement is incorrect? Yeah. Ne- neither neither statement is incorrect there is mm. no incorrect statement like yeah. there is no incorrect opinion you, you can't turn around to somebody and say do you know what your opinion's wrong mm. you can't because mm. there is no like there's no way of you can't do that like there is no way of doing it like i try and engage with 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 everybody mm. in in the sense of is that if i see something and it's like i'll engage like yeah. but not engage in the sense of I'm being confrontational. Just mm. think it's just to try and get where people's heads are at. Yeah. But when it gets to a stage of, you know, and again, this is a point I kind of wanted to make a couple of weeks ago, but I, I never really did. But, you know, like I get, you know, I, you know, I sometimes get people who make kind of passing comments about, about my kind of conduct and stuff. And mm. I'm just kind of like, do you even pay any attention to what I'm doing? Do you know me at all? You know, um, and it, and it, it, it does, of course it gets to you. Mm. It gets to you because you're getting somebody who's going like, you know, like for example, with you, it's like, you'll get people that'll go, Oh, do you know what? This, this tweet looks a bit wrong. Like, are you sure you want to be putting that up? It's like, Hey, I'm, I'm literally just tweeting what everybody else is tweeting. Mm. Like, it's just, it's just like something gets released. Of course, we're going to tweet it out. Like we are a PES community site. So yeah. We have to. I had that a couple of weeks ago. People were saying that, like, but but then but they couldn't not, tweet out the not. players of the week because it, it looked like we were trying to promote it and it was literally like here are the players of the week that was the tweet like there was but nothing also, else but and also like but also yeah and and again on the flip side and I will play devil's advocate there 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 is an there is an argument that by by kind of proxy and by not really intending to there could be an argument to suggest that that you know a tweet like that could validate. You know, yeah, uh, of course. Oh, players, yeah, I did. Like, uh, of course. You know. And I'm not like, I'm not. Do you know what I mean? I'm not like a blind person that could see. Because when he, like, when I had the conversation with whoever was, I, I don't even remember. It was a good few weeks ago. But when I had the conversation, I actually said in the tweet, the follow up tweet, I was like, I actually see your, con- I actually see get your concern now. You know what I mean? I'm literally just like, yeah, reporting, not reporting the news, but like. You know we're a Pez we're a Pez community site. What are we supposed to talk about? Like, yeah, if, if if there's only so much news out, um, like we put up polls today. I put up a poll today about would, whether people would buy Pez Light or or not. Like, you know that yeah. to me, somebody could see that as a oh they're promoting Pez Light, and it's like okay, like what am I supposed to put up a tweet? Like, do you like fucking? Do you know what I mean? Do you like Coke or Pepsi? Like, yeah. it's, it's subjective <laughs> to how you want to view the tweet. But yeah. let's let's move on <laughs> while slightly not moving on. Um, and speaking of Data Pack 3 and the DLC and the updates and all this good stuff, today Konami also dropped squad DLCs. So pretty much this is my club specific. Um, are you going to explain what it is for people that don't know, or are we just assuming that everyone knows what it is by now? You, uh, can, give I a quick, say, you can give a quick overview yeah, of yeah. it, but yeah, yeah, it's I mean, pretty yeah, in regards to really, as, yeah, essentially there are there are partnered, obviously there are partnered clubs within Pez. Um, obviously there are a selection of Pez clubs that are now available via 
uh, basically a DLC download uh, that you can play in my club. Um, I would say uh, you, you, you're essentially you're getting some coins with them as well. You're getting uh, a custom theme for your for your for your uh, for your version of Pez that you've got. Um, and then also you've got, then got I think there's the the kind of classic kits or one of it like yeah, a yeah, set of classic kits. In the new year, they're I think, coming in February, yeah. I believe. It, that read a read properly. Um, you know, for <clears> me, <throat> I I'm not overly sure what this means going forward. Mm. Um, I know that we took a co- or we had a comment from uh, from Arms uh, Arms of Atlas, uh, your Shemu but Shemu oh, yeah, but pal. Uh, which, funny enough, at that retro shop, I did see a copy of Shemu Two that oh, was pristine and How a deep and a Dreamcast. Dreamcast was twenty quid. Fuck uh, at all. It was no, it was it was twenty quid for the game, and then the console was like forty. Yeah, that's not um, bad though. Uh, it's not bad. No. Anyway, I digress. The point is, I don't know where this le- where this is leading yeah. to. What what was? Uh, and and I wish I could I could you know speak to somebody kind of directly not in a oh i want to have a go at them but just wh- what was the thought process for this because you can't earn you can't earn gp from playing with that squad mm. you can't take the manager out and put him somewhere else so you can't take say for example you had ollie you can't take ollie and then go or the the fake name ollie mm. you can't take the fake name ollie and then put him into your other team you can't um take any of the players out yeah. and put them in another team. The players don't develop and they don't lose contracts and they don't lose fitness. I think it's just the only thing they seem to be useful yeah. for is, is, is match day because obviously they'll get a, obviously they'll be, they'll all be blue for me if it's that particular match day, but then Jesus, you yeah. would, you would then have to buy all of those squads and then wait for that. Now I think there's what, six squads at four pounds a go. So that's an extra, what, 25 25 quid ish yeah. and it's like <clears throat> but i don't understand where this means for for gaming in the end yeah like where are we going like where is it where are we going with with pez like yeah. that that's my question to you like uh, 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 i don't know i've pinched it from arms but mm-hmm. where where is the future of pez here yeah. like where where are we going with this where in your opinion where do you feel we're going uh, yeah i don't like to be honest with you i don't I don't exactly know what this says like about the future and about PES 2021 and the next kind of iteration of, of my club um, because it's kind of come really out of the blue, hasn't it? Like I, I like it's, it's been something that it's like, you know, it just popped up and it's like, okay, we've got a full squad. So if I download the light version, I don't have to, you know, worry about getting a team. I can basically just get the light version and I can get a, I can get one of the squad DLCs for like five or six quid and I'm going to have a full event squad to play with. I don't have to worry about managing the team. I don't have to worry about team spirit. Um, I don't have to worry about the, you know, the, the, the contract. Slight, yeah. The slightly or... kind of like what I would say complicated aspects of my club, you know, um, like if you look at, if you look at somebody like Sep, like he has basically, you know, like so many different tactics ongoing, so many different formations, managers, all this type of stuff. And all the top players, are, all the streamers are always mixing the match and trying to get that extra bit of like advantage. So that's a lot for a newcomer to come in. Um, so I think what they've done with this is to basically just say, well, like, look, if you want to play with Ronaldo, you know, here's where you can get him. You can just simply play with him. You don't have to worry about contracts. You don't have to worry about form. You don't have to worry about managers. You don't have to worry about team spirit, you know, familiarity. You don't have to worry about any of the little things that mightn't be, you know, that you're not going to take the time to learn. And you can pretty much just play a match and rock up whenever you want. And then if you want a new squad, you can just get them. Um, They've thrown in a couple of, obviously, a couple of coins, a couple of like the classic kits and stuff. Um, but in terms of the wider like and for that reason for all those reasons that i've said there i don't think it's the worst idea in the world and that's obviously a controversial take that a lot of people won't agree with i don't think it's the worst idea in the world if somebody like gets the game at christmas and they're four or five you know are there what three or four months like behind somebody that has opened a lot of feature players with free coins or whatever and they're like, how can I compete? Well, of course you can compete. You just need to buy Juventus because they're pretty much going to be unstoppable in, in any mode that you play in PES 2020. So on that side of things, from an actual newcomer point of view, I think it's a good idea. 
but in terms of balancing a game mode that is so dependent on building a squad i i, I yeah. just don't see what the reasoning is behind it in terms of you know you can't even earn gp with it you can't like they're basically yeah. just like a shell squad now the only reason the only thing i would say is what you could do is and it would take a bit of take a lot of grinding but there would be if you use the squad for match day and yep. just like literally just grinded the coins so play all, oh, yeah, the, yeah. all the games like that you know get your get your rewards get your scouts get your whatever and it could act as as like you know a slight introduction yeah. to somebody who buys juventus and doesn't know what the auction house is are like fuck i've got 50 scouts what the hell are scouts you know what i mean and they start actually going yeah, yeah. And using the scouts then um yeah, but yeah, again, I you think, know, glass half full, glass half empty. You know, if it's, I, it's risk, it's risk and reward. Yeah, it, you know, and I, I said it on stream tonight in this case of, you know, they are, you know, that they are still, and I know that people will probably hate me for saying this, but they're still in a mode of we're trying to do different things. Mm. We're trying to figure out what worked, what what our fan base reacts to, and what it doesn't react to. Yeah, and, and that's and okay. Like if you know it's, what I mean? it's that's okay. okay. Like it's okay to be in that mode. That's yeah. fine. Um, but what would you say though? If I, like, what would you say? And I know we've kind of spoken about this before, but let's just say, right? The 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 legends came out today, so York, Cole, and Scolzi were added to to a coin only agent, basically. Yeah. Um, for people that aren't logged into my club in a couple of days, but that agent was released today with I think it was like a hundred more players or something. Yeah. Um. So it's coin only. Can't use GP. Um. Like, what would you, you know, and I've seen, I've seen multiple people say on Twitter today, you know, oh, I, I swore I was never going to spin again or never going to buy any more coins, but this is, you know, I'm going to do it now for this one. I'm going to spin. I saw a lot of people say that. And I was even yeah. tempted, you know, being a fucking massive United fan. Like, I met Andy Cole, like, earlier in the year, like, and kicked around with him. So it's like, I would love to play with him in Pez. And I probably will spin a couple. Um to chance getting him but like what would you say if it was a thing where it was like okay there's a legend pack that was released today and it's like you have in the pack you have say Scolzi in midfield you either get Andy Cole or York and you get a center half who's somebody let's just say Yap Stam or you get fucking Steve Bruce or Vidic or Ferdinand or somebody and it's like it's a three it's a three player pack five quid six quid like would you because would 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 you have a different opinion about that because i know i would be a hypocrite by saying i have concerns about the squad dlc but if they dropped a legends pack with roy Keane in it like you might as well yeah. not don't even ask me would i buy it because i would do you know what i mean and yeah like, well, you've, you've already said you're visiting my house because i've got him on yeah FIFA. well i definitely will but like <laughs> that's what i'm saying to you is like how would you how would you feel if you know they they drop the pack with that where it's like okay we're bringing out these exclusive time exclusive legend packs for Christmas they're five quid but you're going to get you know R nine up front or you're going to get David Beckham guaranteed or Scolzi guaranteed or Gerard guaranteed along yep. with two other players guaranteed like yep. like uh, would that would that change your that, thought that, process yeah it would yeah. because there's there's a guarantee yeah you you know what you're getting when yeah. you open that pack because if you go right here's here's a fiver here's a fiver and you can guarantee you get your legends or whatever yeah. i'm on board with that that's fine but is that not the because, same then as somebody that's is that not a kind of and i know it's not legends but if you replace that thought process with legends and say somebody that wants cristiano ronaldo because if you've got a 13 or 14 year old kid they've grown up with Ronaldo as their hero. Like we would have grown up with Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo or, you know, Zidane or Figo as our heroes, Beckham as our heroes, where it's like, you know, is that not the same thing that they're doing with trial, trial and this out with having the full squad of Juventus in there? No. So you, really? your, your issue with the squad DLC is that they're kind of worthless in terms of building GP you, or like you can, training you can, them or, yeah, you you can't like take that team. Yeah. You can't take that team and use it as a like a, a byproduct to then build up your GP. Mm -hmm. Like like it'd be far far nicer if you could go. Okay, well here's your here's your like your throwaway squad that you can use 
Um, it gives all of your players a rest. You, are, you know, it allows you to gain GP without sacrificing contracts, mm. it, without fitness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's there's nothing there. There's yeah. nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is match day. And and in all honesty, if you can't play the match day windows, you're not going to buy the DLC, are you? Yeah. Because well, that's true. because 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 it'll be absolutely useless to you. Mm. Like I was all geared up to buy the UV one today. I was already. I was like, wow, yeah. Uh, Dybala and uh, Ronaldo for mm. four quid. Yep, I love some of that. Yeah, and then as soon as the penny dropped when I read, oh, actually you can't use them for this, you can't use them for that, you can't use them for the other. I was like, well, that's me out then. Yeah, There's no point, no point in me buying it because yeah, I can't play match. You've already, see, you've already. That's 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 another point then as well. Is I'm I'm in the same boat because I don't want to give up the squad that I've built since launch. You know what I mean? You've already kind of you're already like. You've already started your squad. You've built your positions. You know what yeah. players you like playing with. I'm. I think this is more geared at people that are actually new to the game, that are going to try the game, that might necessarily try it, like before this came out. Um. So again, it is like I'd love to actually get someone on, and maybe we will for the the Christmas special episode where we're going to have a bit of a round table. I'd love to get somebody on that actually thinks this is like the best idea ever because. Everyone has different opinions, and I'm sure that yeah. some people like I can see the good in this and the bad in this, um, because like speaking speaking of match day, just as you brought that up and to kind of slightly steer onto that, um, speaking of match day today, like you know credit where credit is due. We spoke about this on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, where I think I don't know, if, I, I think it could have been Vern that was on with us, or I yeah, think it, it was, Vern. was. It was Vern. and we were talking about you know that. For 90% of people that probably, you know, play PES or even more, it's like everyone has jobs during the day, you know, especially with the UK timing of the match day where it was like, what, three to six or three to five or something where it's like, yeah, it's how are you going six. to actually play that? Like yeah. if you're working a nine to five or whatever um, and they have, you know, they've taken that on board and they've increased and extended the time frame to play it, which, you know, look, credit where credit is due um they did do it and i was able to actually play today a little bit of match day and uh -huh. it was actually genuinely one of the best sessions of pez i've had in a while because do you know why because i genuinely had more to play for than just winning games because win lose or draw i was amassing points that were getting yep. me i think i needed two thousand points which is basically one win or two draws or three losses or something like that so if i lost three games I was still going to get my points enough to get two scouts from Manchester United that were four star and two scouts from City that were four star. Not and bad, not bad. It, you know what I mean? And it was like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't care that this guy has an unbelievable team and he's thumping me 3 2 or 3 0 or whatever it is. I'm just yeah. going to hang in here, complete the match, get my coin, get my coins at the end of it, and yeah, I mean, it's not the the odd occasions that I've been able to 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 play it. You know, it, it has been beneficial. You yeah. know, uh, I think it was the ones where you could you basically you got the um, you got the kind of silver ball, the book gold ball, and then I think because of the because of the rating I was at, because I was in the expert one, you could get two black balls out of it. Yeah, that's great stuff yeah. because you you. Yeah, because you're you're giving people something to aim for, yeah. but then you're also giving them something back, which is great because that's exactly how it should be. You should be giving giving back to to the people because, you know, the, we can clearly see you know about coins and, and all the rest of it about how much how much is is probably earned, no doubt from 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 them. You know, yeah. you can you can kind of notice and see it. So it's like you know, dishing a couple of black balls back here or there. Ain't gonna be, ain't gonna break the bank, is it? Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, maybe that that is something they look at. Um, you know, th yeah, there's it's obviously definitely, there, there, it's there's so much like potential there. I I do think though, I am gonna make this call. I do think that there will be more content and more campaigns coming over like the next couple of months. Yeah, I think I mean, it will come. I just think it's been slow. Yeah, I think yeah, I think if you look at the you know, and that's the the kind of one that's coming up in the next couple of weeks, you've got the, the 25k GP yeah. a day. That's actually quite good because it's like, oh, okay, we, all you have to do is log in. Like, yeah. you don't even need to play a game, which, yeah. And people know, will say, like, the thing about it is that people will say, oh, like, GP is no good. But, like, you can literally buy, like, with, with that 175,000 GP that you're going to get, you can literally buy, like, a pretty decent 
player in the auction house. Do you know what I mean? Like you might have to buy two agents or whatever, but you can save up to buy a top class player. Like I think one of the lads was saying to me today that they got him Bappe for four hundred and fifty thousand GP. Oh, in all the agents. Now that seems very cheap to me based on the agents, but it's possible that he did because. Um, you know, everyone probably has Mbappe now, so it's kind of like our, yeah. a player close to it. So yeah. it is going to be, it is going to be, it is going to be something that like we probably, I don't know, we probably like will need to keep an eye on in the future. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, just to just before we kind of go on to, to obviously next topic because I know we were talking about um, about the content stuff and at least the, the things that have changed there. And I know we touched on it kind of earlier on but the the loss of the Colombian league yeah that's again that's something that like I don't think I don't know there hadn't been any real like anything about it (laughs) like yeah sorry I was just actually a bit distracted there I was just watching the Arsenal loss tonight I think oh wow (laughs) I think they did anyway sorry just something somebody just messaged me something there um saying that Henri could be their new manager or something oh get out no no um, yeah but like it, it is it is a very kind of weird one isn't it it's kind of like uh like the colombian league was there and now it's basically just being replaced with all like generic kits and stuff and like i don't know like there was no no mention of it do you know what i mean so yeah there was, there was just it just came out of nowhere yeah. there wasn't really it was it was I wouldn't necessarily say it was downplayed because I don't really think... uh, I think it was only once people kind of booted up the game. Um, Yeah, I just hope it doesn't lead to any any other potential leagues going down the... Yeah, I hope not. Not It's definitely not before the end of the year anyway. Like before the end of PES 2020. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not even sure what effect that would have. Like, uh, you know, it's... it's, Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's, a, it's a, an interesting one. Yeah, um, I mean, it definitely but, is. Like, it's definitely something that you know to us, obviously, like being over in this part of the world. Like, if if this was like you know second division, like you know the outcry when the second divisions were taken away last year. Oh yeah, yeah, it yeah, would be yeah, yeah. Massive if we were to lose our second divisions, but um, you know, or the like the English leagues or whatever. But for this, like this is probably massive news over for people that are in Colombia. You know what I mean? Oh, it's it's probably a huge 100%. thing where they're going from playing games with their licensed teams to like not now. So um, But it's just it well to them it's it's losing their Premier League. Yeah, basically, yeah. So And and obviously we know we know obviously from historically how uh how big the um you know the how big the, the, the kind of community is across in South America. You know, yeah. there's Obviously, prominent, huge, prominent pro players. There's prominent kit makers. There's there's all kinds of stuff over yeah. in South America that, it, you know, I'm I'm sure that they will have very colourful takes on it over mm-hmm. the next uh, sure. over the next couple of days. That speaks, yeah. That's that speaks openly about it. Yeah, but, <laughs> I'm, um, sure, I, I'm sure they won't be hard to find. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, there, man, I did get distracted because we are going to make this a regular thing because people were people were loving us talking about real football and I suppose it ties into to Pez and our love for football in general but we started to make this kind of like a regular we're going to make this a regular thing of talking about like the real life goings on around the world of football as well as Pez so um Arsenal lost tonight that's what that's probably going to be we have a few we have a few stories to get through and a few topics I suppose well, um, yeah, was... but Arsenal lost tonight. They conceded. It was one all, I think, and then I think they conceded in like the eighty second or third minute or something to Brighton oh. away. Oh. So Brighton, they were they were at home. Arsenal were at home tonight. Um, which, as far as I know, I'm just trying to look up here. Yeah, it drops them. It drops them to tenth, but they're level on points with Newcastle and Sheffield United. Good God! And they're literally only two points. They're two points from thirty from fourteenth. So Brighton are like a point behind them now. Um, do you know? Do you know what this has echoes of? And I, and I know obviously the the two the two managers in question who are who are linked this to are incredibly linked anyway. Mm. This is very similar to when Fergie left United, yeah, it, it, it and, ever, and everyone and everyone was like, "Don't worry, it's all going to be fine. Everything's yeah. going to be working out just fine." Yeah. And then it's just like it cuts to the room being on fire and the dog sat in the chair going, "Yep, yeah, this is fine." Yeah. Because that, that's literally Arsenal are. Uh, on fire at the moment and yeah. not in the good way. They're struggling really bad. 
Yeah. Like it, it, it's it's sad to see because like some of my fondest memories growing up were like you know Vieira and Keane and look at how powerful they were whilst we were growing up and then you kind of go does every team have its day you know mm. there was there was there was a small little time once upon a time where where Villa were considered one of the best teams in England yeah uh, you know obviously that is a far cry from where we are right now mm. and and god forbid i'd never turn around and go yeah i remember all that i remember when we were that good it was like yeah. mm, similar to leeds um, remember when leeds started yeah to kind of and come it's, up it's, yeah and it's it's, it's one of those it. yeah and it's you know it i think every team has its time you know mm. my 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 first my my first question that was going to be to you um when we were recording was going to be uh who, who's your next sacking but the two prominent yeah. ones that i went oh actually they're probably next on the block have already gone which is obviously marco silva from everton who already just went this evening yeah he's just gone um and like obviously two, three four hours ago yeah and Mize and unai emre mys is supposed to be in talks i think yeah and 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 even then that's a that's a weird yeah, that's a, a weird, weird that's a, it is that's a weird, weird appointment you know return of the x's they tend not to go very well <laughs> <laughs> no you know and it, it's one of those where it's like in in this kind of chaotic I and mean, it is chaotic at the moment yeah. the the premier league it's ca- it is it's chaos weird. yeah it's absolute chaos because i don't think clubs are they're they're that confident with their own managers anymore. Yeah. Like I think they're just in this kind of mode of going, okay, well, well, we'll get rid of somebody first because then the other person, will, you know, that you know the other team won't won't get rid of their manager then. Mm. And it's like no, you know, I think Arsenal missed the boat when when Mourinho got on to yeah. Tottenham. Yeah, That's I think they'll go for him, especially when he's th- going to London. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think I think they'll miss the boat on a point in Pochettino. Yeah. I don't, um, think would, I don't think Poch would actually go... Would he go to Arsenal after being at, with Spurs? Well, it'd be the ultimate payback, wouldn't it? You it get would, bombed, it would. You, you get bombed out of the club that you always wanted, to, you know, that you took to a Champions League final and you yeah. go to their nearest rivals and do them over. Yeah, well, if, if, like, if, if he was if a he success... Get then, yeah, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's it. That's 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 where we're at as a footballing thing at the moment. Is there isn't really that much loyalty in football anymore? No, um, it's crazy. Like it's just it's it's mad. Like because it's just it's so hard to even understand like how far United have fallen, how far Arsenal have fallen. Like City seem this year to be. I don't know. Is it just like they've just been so consistent over the last like two three years? I was going like, to say this. It, yeah. It's just it's very hard to keep those levels of consistency up and Liverpool have so much hunger so much appetite now to win one that like it'll like it'll be if they win it this year if they win the league this year and I can't see them not winning it this year I just can't if they win it this year like that could be the peak of that Arsenal squad you know what I mean or the Liverpool squad sorry that could be a thing where it's like once they get to that promised land they mightn't be able to win back to back. Do you know that kind of way? Like City, yeah. what City have achieved is unbelievable. No matter how much money they've spent, whatever. Like they've all the clubs yeah. have spent money. Um, yeah, I mean, you you always look at it, and and you know, and again to to quote Ferguson, that the hardest thing to do once you've won a title is retain it. Yeah, uh, you know, we looked at Leicester, Leicester, and obviously Leicester in that I can only describe it as a weird season. Um, then went and basically just completely fell apart the next season yeah you know and you, you know it can happen to anyone it can happen to any team at any time yeah. uh, and that is that's the danger i suppose of of being a premier league team is you, you are in that scenario where anything can happen and yeah. i think i think we're still in that scenario i think any any manager who is managing in the premier league at this point in time mm. I would happily say is under some type of pressure. You know, you look at Dean Smith at Villa. I know, obviously, it's quite close to my heart. Um, but you look at it and you go, "Okay, he's a local boy. We've just signed a new four-year contract, but we've got Wesley, who looks a shadow of of anything. Yeah, he looks a complete and utter shadow. Mm. Um, you look at you know some of the players that we've 
you know, that we that we have on our books. You look at Jota and you look at these types of players and you go, are they really good enough for Villa? Are they yeah. really good enough? Are they good enough to hold it in the Premier League? And some people go, yeah, do you know what? You'll you'll be fine in the end. And it's like, well, yeah, we might be all right in the end, but at, at what cost? Like, yeah. what are we what are we going to cost here to, to stay up? What's it going to take? And it you takes know, a lot nowadays, though. It's a, it's a different game. Like it's, I think like, the world. I think that I think the football the footballing world changed. Yeah. Like it it changed when with um, with TV money and yeah. and, and again, we'll, we'll City. just I just want to touch on that. Well, you you blame City. But well, the, no, to be fair, I don't blame City. I think, I think, like at the, the, the end first of the thing day, to do, the first thing to do with Chelsea, like yeah, you well, know, Chelsea as soon as Abramovich was the first, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. yeah. When you're hoovering up kind of UK talent and then mixing it with continental talent, and then yeah. it equals Champions Leagues, or sorry, Championships even. Yeah. Um, but United did you know, it too, that, and you know, we all, yeah, like, all the teams did it. Like, let's be yeah. honest. And that's the thing. It's like it's all teams uh, are going to have those types of stages. You yeah. know, there was a, there was a time where where Villa wouldn't buy anything that wasn't English. Yeah. You know, we, you know when we had Rear Coker and we had Young, and I'm sounding like an old man, but yeah. we had Agbon you know, Lahore. We had Agbon Lahore. Ashley we had Young. Ashley Young, John Carew. That was a that was know. a tasty little team by you had. Well, we basically had the England eleven. Well, yeah. I say we had the England eleven. We could have put out an England eleven. Yeah. You know, Luke Young was Delph breaking was there as well, wasn't he? Yeah, Delph was there. Yeah, yeah Luke, Luke Luke Young was breaking into the England squad yeah. by by a proxy mm. because he was just associated with us. You know, <laughs> Nicky, Nicky Shuri and Stephen Warnock were left backs. Yeah, you know, and but it, you know, you look at it and you just kind of go, where where is football going to go next? Now, I, I was absolutely fascinated with the midweek games being on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Um, I absolutely one absolutely love the coverage. Yeah, it was uh, brilliant, wasn't it? Uh, two, the the customizable options you got with it, the fact that you could turn commentary off if you really mm. wanted to. But who in their right mind would want to shut off Peter Drury commentary? <laughs> That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, very good. Literally, who would want to? Same with that, Clive Tilsley. Who wants yeah. to turn them off? Genuinely. But that's like, like that's the thing. Even even going back a couple of years ago, like, and I know again we sound real old, like, but like even going back and saying like. Oh, do you know? Do you think you'd ever be able to like watch like a live football match, like proper, like stream and quality, like you know, on an actual streaming service like Netflix? And it's like, yeah, like Amazon Prime is pretty much Netflix for Amazon. And yep. now they're showing they do they do it with the tennis, they show live sport, like the Premier League thing was unreal because you just switch it on and it's like fuck all the ch- all the matches are here. Like it's it's just it is evolving. Like it's forever invol- uh, uh, evolving and changing and stuff. You know, it's it's mad. It's mad times altogether. Yeah, and and that's and that's it. It's that the world has has kind of uh, the world has moved it on a bit, yeah. and it, it it is it is it's not even a shame anymore. It's just like the this is just how it is. Yeah, this is just how it's gonna be. And and uh, I, you know, I I would welcome I would welcome. Uh, pretty much every four, every four match to be on Amazon Prime. Yeah. If I could watch three o'clock, uh, you know, when they're when they're <laughs> hopefully when the, the Premier League deal expires, if it's a case that thanks to the broadcasting rights we can end up watching uh, three o'clock Saturday games, mm. I'm all over that. Yeah, it'd be unreal, wouldn't it? I'd be all over that. Uh, you know, the more the better. You know, eight quid a month. Yes, yeah. please. It's unreal. You know, it, it's it's. You know, it's 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 the way the modern world's moving, and yeah. it kind of comes just, back. It's just the accessibility of stream, like like Amazon Prime. You can watch it on any device. You know what I mean. You can like load it up on your phone, your iPad, or your TV, your PS4. Do you know, you could be playing, you could be playing like a game or two of Pez or something, and then just switch into Amazon Prime. Like do you know, like join a Master League match or something, and like switch back out. Like it's just like it, it's it is the way to go I think and I'm surprised that somebody like Netflix hasn't actually come out and just said here's a billion gazillion like <laughs> pounds and well yeah all they need know. to do is look at all they need to do is look at the metrics that's that's yeah. you know data, data analysis and quantifiable data are the kings of making decisions yeah. in, in all in all walks of life which yeah. kind of brings it neatly back on to, to Pez in the sense of you know, and it will kind of bring it back around full circle in regards to kind of content and, and stuff like that. Is that you know, if you if you log in on any given day, that counts as a login. Yeah. You know, I, I hate to break, it, I hate to break it to people. If you're breaking in and you're doing the whole like, oh, well, I'm just getting into get my login bonus, or I'm just looking in to do this, that's a login. Yeah. 
and it's going to count. It's going to count towards the metric, and then it, it, it then counts towards the numbers. Yep. You know, uh, and you know if that if that is if that is you know if you're fine with that, then cool. You know, you know it, it's it's you know it, that's just the way it is. You know, and it's difficult. It's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see over the next like month or, or so how mm. how how kind of the content goes. Um, you know, whether we see content that traditionally we've seen or are we going to see something new or is it going to be more of the same you know it's just going to be interesting to see mm. um you know and i'm sure that you know the the community as as vocal as they are i'm sure they'll be even more vocal if they they obviously need to be yeah but it is it, it, you're right like you're right it's it's uh it's definitely something that people don't probably think about when they actually log in and they're like oh i'm just logging in to get my like my login bonus like it's like yeah but you're still logging in to play the game it's like no no i'm not playing the game well yeah you are like you know it's yeah. you, it's you just have kind stopped, of whatever way people want to play or whatever way people want to do with their own game like it still does count as you are effectively logging in like for whatever reason so yeah um but i do think that the login bonuses are kind of addictive that way because you're like oh i don't want to miss a day because it kind of puts you back two days then of login you know yeah so yeah um but yeah, man. I mean, just to just to kind of finish up with mentioning the epic win by United the other day. <laughs> um, I watched it on Amazon Prime actually, but I thought they looked very good. And of course, my boy Rashford scored and he hit the crossbar as well. He would have had a hat trick if he hadn't scored if he'd missed if he'd scored that one. But I thought he looked uh, pretty decent. But I never thought I would say this, but I think that Scott McTominay is the is the key to the puzzle with United. They look like, he's he's so underrated, like why he does. He's just like you know, he just does everything. He's like Jordan Henderson. He does everything well without ex being excellent in any area. Do you know, he's just like a utility man. He's just kind of he can put in a challenge if needs be, he can defend, he can kind of go forward. He's not the fastest, but he's fast enough to get himself out of trouble. He can pass the ball, he can tackle. And they just kind of tick like with him. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping now that United just kind of give Ole a chance and leave him there. I don't know. Let him spend big in January. I know that they're being linked with a couple of players, but um, it will be it will be interesting to see what happens. But I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm not going to ask oh. you who's going to win the Premier League. That's too easy. We're going to we're going to remember this. We're going to remember this choice now. <laughs> because we did it we did it earlier last year who is going to win the champions league oh oh, oh. oh that's that's so uh and we'll end on that on snap on snap thoughts i say liverpool will retain it Ooh, fuck that's a big call you think they're going to do if, a double but if you look at how they're playing at the moment you tell me a team on planet earth stopping them yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to be honest with you. The way they're playing at the moment, they're in scintillating form. Like, but it is right. They're, they're I am I, I am scared of the League Cup quarter final with their <laughs> leaving their kids at home. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm I literally think, scared because I we're going to see um, Rian Brewster and um, Harry. Uh, was it Harvey Elliott? Uh, they're in the same squad, and they're going to literally go. Yeah, we're going to leave them at home, and then we're going to fly them out. Yeah, it's crazy. I, isn't it? I am. I am petrified of that game, bro. Mm. <laughs> it's crazy I'm going to go on I'm going to go all out here and I'm going to say that Munich are going to win Champions League this year Let, I'll tell you what though I, I, you know when we had that whole chat about best number nine on the planet and you yeah. went ah, I think Lewandowski would have something to say about that I was like I actually, <laughs> I actually, I actually then went and looked at Lewandowski's stats that have guy is his goal record like? fire he's unreal he's absolutely mental um, it's like also, I like I watched all, like I've watched every goal he scored like this season already, and like the range of goals he scores, like are just he just he's just an amazing goal scorer. Like he's the best. I think he's the best goal scorer in the world. Anyway, well, that's it. It's, it depends on what word you're using to describe yeah. people. Best best striker or best finisher. It's it's totally it's totally whatever whatever asterisks you want to put on it. Featured Lewandowski incoming. Yeah, every well. Week. He, yeah, every week the, until the <laughs> they end could of if they time, wanted, probably because he is a beast. Well, yeah, well, you, you know, there's not going to be a week where he's not knocking him in for Bayern Munich. Uh, you know, injury injuries, uh, injury permitting, of yeah. course. I think they could. I think they could be. No, I won't say that they'd be like an underdog, but 
I think that they if they get a if they get a good if they get a nice draw, I think that they could turn over any team. Maybe apart from I would say Liverpool in a two legged tie. Mm-hmm. I think Liverpool would be would best them in a two legged tie. And I think maybe Barcelona might as well, even though they're misfiring at the moment. I mean, like they have surely Barcelona have to start clicking sometime. Like they have too much like do you know what I mean? Unbelievable squad, but well, the perfect one for us would be Liverpool by Liverpool by Munich final. Oh, that would be unreal, wouldn't it? That was that would be it. Lewandowski that'd be final actually, wouldn't it? Well, that'd be a brutal final. Yeah. Well, <laughs> where's it? Where's it? Where's the final being held again? Yeah. <laughs> Is that are they going back to Istanbul? Like it? Like I'm sorry. Like it? Like, like that's not written. It? Like that's not written in the stars already. Yeah, that's a bit crazy now. Okay, <laughs> I, I want to change my pick. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna delete this part of the podcast and we're gonna start again. <laughs> but um. No, I'm gonna stick with Byron. I'm gonna stick with Byron. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll pretty be much it for until the new year, I'd say. So we probably will have, I don't know, Wes. We still haven't decided what we're gonna do for our special twentieth episode, but I'm sure we'll think of something. We'll think. Um, we'll think of some type of blockbuster. We'll, yeah. we'll get something. We'll get some guests on. You never know. There might be some mad news to drop by that time. You, you never, never know. know. You never know. There might be some <laughs> crazy agents released. Yeah, Roy Keane maybe. <laughs> Can I interest you in that? Can I interest you in a Roy Keane? Yes, Ooh, yes, you can. <laughs> I would be definitely remortgaged in the house. Simple. <laughs> but anyway, that is it from me. And uh, Wes, I'll let you end it out. But um, don't forget to like and comment. Don't forget to like and comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. On We're on YouTube. We're on SoundCloud. We're on iTunes. We're pretty much everywhere. We're just everywhere. We're yeah. just everywhere. So that is pretty much it from me, Wes. I'll let you say your goodbyes, and uh, we will see you in the next one, lads. Yeah, take care, everyone. Thanks for listening if you got this far. <laughs> <laughs>